Hello. So I don't know if... That was pretty good. You guys sound like the Three Stooges. So I don't know if you're a football fan. So let me just catch you up if you're not aware of what happened last weekend. So I watched that interview. <clears throat> and you're going to manifest. If you just believe something, if you just believe it, it makes it true. If you just think it, it will happen. If you just believe the right thing and say the right words, then you're going to play in that very first game back, get tackled four times, and the fourth time break your Achilles tendon and not play the rest of the year. Can I tell you something, Christians? Now, he's not a Christian. He's, a, he's actually an anti-Christian. I don't know if you've heard him talk about Christianity. He doesn't give it a very positive light. But I will say something about his New Age philosophy. <laughs> now, here's the truth. I want you to be positive. I, I believe in positive affirmations. I think too often we look at life the wrong way and we discourage people. But here's the truth. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was saying, God, take this cup from me, he did a second sentence. But not my will, your will be done. And too often, if we're honest, and, I, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, if you're going to take a nap, I know Marcus is getting ready to take a nap, so um, I'll be honest with you. When I go to pray for people in the hospital, <laughs> and I probably got this from Rudy Moberg because he's a little too honest in his prayers, but what I'll pray sometimes, I'm like, God, I want you to heal them. God, I'm selfish. This is what I want. But Lord, I also want your will to be done. Now, I, I don't want you to feel bad for Aaron Rodgers. I looked it up just to make sure. For the next two years, he is guaranteed $75 million for watching games. Put your tissues away. I know. So he did manifest something. But be careful, listen, be careful letting some of these new age philosophies that you say just the right words in your prayer and God will have to answer the way you want, or if you just have enough faith, God will do what you want Him to do. Be very careful. Because the truth is, there's a lot of people hurting the cause of Christ, claiming that they have a word from God or a prophecy about the future of our nation or whatever, and they are trying to manifest something, and they're just full of garbage. And I don't know if you caught what McEnroe said at the end. He said, well, I really like the positivity. I don't know if you caught that. He's basically like, you're crazy. <laughs> and I'm a crazy person, so I definitely know. <laughs> By the way, I saw John McEnroe uh, uh, critiquing one of the new tennis players who was very uh, angry. And John McEnroe said, you know, he really shouldn't be that upset. And I thought, <laughs> did you ever watch you play? Because we watched you play. So John McEnroe was a very famous tennis player back in the day, and he literally was the angriest, most yelling tennis player to this day. Okay, there you go. Yeah, okay. Just had to tell you that. They've seen Mr. Deeds, and they're good. All right. Wouldn't it be nice, though, let's just be honest. Wouldn't it be nice if you just had, if you said just the right words and got what you wanted. If you could, like, like, you know, you bought the prayer of Jabez book, and you said, oh, it's got, a, it's got a prayer in there, and if I pray that prayer, I'll get what I want. Yeah. Now, I understand, it's not a bad book, I, you know, don't get me wrong, but, but the truth is, we have to learn to pray, God, this is what I want. And we got to be honest. Sometimes, let's just be honest sometimes when we're praying. God, I'd like, you know, you said pray for daily bread. I'd like weekly, monthly, retirement bread would be nice. Bread for all my friends, right? And he says pray for daily bread. And yet, 
we have to be honest. And so sometimes when I pray, I say, God, this is what I want. You know what I want. But Lord, your will be done. God, you know what's best. You know the best way to answer this prayer. And by the way, inside of that, I want you to know, I've seen God do miracles where people would say, I love that I've been a part of praying for people who had cancer, went in for cancer surgery, and the doctor said, huh, I guess our scan was wrong. We don't see any cancer. And I go, I don't care what you call it. We'll call it a miracle. And so I know God can do that, but can I tell you that God doesn't always do what I want, and I'm the pastor, <laughs> right? And some of you are like, that's why God does it to what you want. <laughs> but, but the truth is that for all of us, we have to learn to line up our will. And one of the things about prayer sometimes is to understand that when you pray for something, if God doesn't change a circumstance or a situation, He's working on you in that situation. And He always, always, always is with you in that circumstance. Some of you have been through, and we talk about going through the fire, some of you have been through things that I can't even imagine walking through. Some of you right now, whether you're here or watching because you're home, because you're walking through things that are beyond anything that I can even fathom. And yet what I know from the biggest things in my life is that God has never, ever left me. He doesn't always do what I want. I wish He did. You know, if He was smarter, right? Too often we think we're God and we know better, but the truth is He does know. Today, as we look at some guys who stood up for what's right, you need to understand that we will all struggle sometimes because we stand up for what's right. And sometimes we'll struggle with wanting to bow down to different idols. I wrote down a few that we struggle with today, popularity. They've interviewed students now. It used to be when we were kids, they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we would say things like astronauts. I, would, I said garbage man, by the way, just so you know. Still jealous of garbage men, just so you know that. If you're a garbage man, I'm like, you have the best job. It's just the, I wave at the garbage man every day. I'm one of those weird dads that wall goes by. Yes. Enjoy. And now, you know what the number one goal is? To be popular. They want to be an influencer. They've bowed down to popularity and being famous, and they think that's what life is about. It doesn't fulfill anybody. Some of us are good Christians, but we're into people pleasing. We think our job is to make everybody happy. So we bow down to the idol of trying to make everyone happy. By the way, you can't. And you'll really be depressed if you try to do that. We bow down to entertainment. I just need to be entertained. I got to find the next Netflix show, which apparently is about a guy on the shuttle. That's the newest, greatest. Is it Netflix or Prime? Prime. It's supposed to be really good. But when we make our life about finding entertainment, we miss the reality of what life is really about. Maybe it's leisure. For some of us, it's gone beyond just having the comfortable chair. It's about being comfortable all the time and not ever being uncomfortable. That's not a call to the Christian life. That's a call to the lazy life. When you do what God wants you to do, you're going to be uncomfortable. When you help somebody, you're going to be uncomfortable. No good deed goes unpunished. That's absolutely true. You'll help people and they'll hurt you. Maybe it's pleasure. You're looking just to have pleasure all the time. Just no sadness. That's why I fast forward through the sad parts of movies. My wife will tell you. I ruin many movies. I Google them before we watch them. I Google these words. Does the dog die? And more than once, I've looked at Kristen and said, we're not watching that. And she says, what? I go, the dog dies. She's like, why'd you tell me that? I'm like, because I'm not watching it. <laughs> By the way, this is our proposal day, and thank you for saying yes to me. <clears throat> not everybody's smart all the time, but... I'm glad for that one dumb decision she made, that's for sure. Walking in faith does not mean you won't have trouble. I wish it did. In faith, you're going to endure trials, 
accusations, but you can still speak in faith and reality, and most importantly today, Jesus is with you. So let's talk about when we walk in faith and look at this story in Daniel. By the way, I'm hoping by doing this series on Daniel that you'll actually, you ready for this? You'll actually, watch this, get your Bible out, whether it's in your app or your iPad or your iPhone or the one that's sitting in front of you, take it home, just don't tell anybody. Tell them it was an accident. Mike's going to be mad at me just for saying that, but... And, and read the book of Daniel. It's a great, great book of the Bible. So today we're going to look at this story. We may endure trials and accusations. Here we go. Whoever does not fall down. So they've been, this 90-foot statue is brought out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, some call Horshak, are not going to bow down to it. And so here's what happens. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound, and I love that they name all the instruments, of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now listen to this. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. Time out. If you look at the chapter before this, Daniel saved these guys' lives when he didn't have to. He interpreted a dream for the king, and the king did not kill them. So how does he, they get paid back? They attack them. Why? Because they're jealous of them. Jealousy will ruin your life. And don't be surprised. A lot of people have said to me, I don't know why they would be jealous. Because you're happy. Because you leave other people alone. There's people who just love to cause trouble. And these guys couldn't stand it that some refugees had taken part of their job. And so they attacked them. And then it continues. They said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, may the king live forever. That's in how to win friends and influence people. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound, and I love that they say all the instruments again, horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, <gasps> pipe, and all kind of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. And then they say, but there are some Jews who you set over the province of Babylon. See how they're remembering what happened? Shadrach, Horshak, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. Your majesty, they neither serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Now, you remember the first test they dealt with was the food test. And that was not a life or death test. That was a, will you bow down and, and serve other gods? Will you go against what God has called you to do? That was their first test. This test is, will you bow to peer pressure? Are you willing to go as far as risking your life? This was not, this was a bigger test. This was a multiplied test. By the way, in your Christian life, let me tell you something. If you try to walk with God, if you start to be obedient to God, you're going to start with a simple test where you stand up for what's right. But can I tell you that what happens in life is if you start to pass the simple test, the enemy doesn't like it and he will come after you with a bigger test. And people all the time say, where was Daniel? And here's the answer to that. I don't know. But don't worry. When Daniel's an old man, somebody throws him in a lion's den. So that's coming in a few weeks. Woohoo! And what happened? They had a small test. They passed the small test. God blessed them. They began to be noticed. Other people took notice. And what happens? The next test is big. If you're a believer, here's also something that I know. God never fails you. But like a good teacher, he gives retakes. So some of you keep saying, I don't know why I'm still struggling with this. Because you haven't passed yet. I don't know why every time I drive, I get angry. Retake. Seems like every time I drive, they're just idiots everywhere. It's probably angels. You're going to get to heaven, and Gabriel's going to be like, you remember that day you were cussing at that guy in the left lane going 70 miles an hour? That was me. You heard that? 
By the way, you'll be looking like this. You heard that? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. But you won't face trials, right? Because you're a Christian and you manifested the right thing. And if you just had faith, you'd get a new jet. Turn off some of those TV preachers, right? Because you know that the testing <clears throat> and retesting of your faith produces perseverance. Why is perseverance important? Because you get stronger. And you know what happens when you get stronger? You can help to carry someone else. Some of you have been through horrible things. But there's other people who've been through horrible things. And sometimes the very thing that you've walked through that I can't even imagine. As I talk to you, I think, I, I, I don't even know what that would be like. But as you build perseverance and you get stronger, you're able to now put your arm around somebody else and go, not only can I walk because I survived that, but I can help you to walk. I can help you to take the next step. I can't lift all of your burden, but I can lift a little bit. I can come and be here for you. I can give you some advice. I can give you some encouragement. I can tell you I understand, and you know that I really do understand. Perseverance helps you to help other people. Number two, we can speak in faith and reality. Faith and reality. Shadrach, Horshak, I know it's Meshach, I know it's Meshach. And Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, I love this, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Time out. If you, if you were before the most powerful king ever, by the way, at this time, in the world, you would not start with the first sentence being, we don't really have to defend ourselves. I mean, the dude standing with guards around him with swords and spears and shiny stuff that hurts. And your first sentence is, just so you know, we don't have to defend ourselves. Shoo. Blah, 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 blah. All the ADD people got exactly what I was doing. The other people are like, what was that? What was that? It was a rolling head, okay? It was a rolling head. All right. <clears throat> Thanks for playing along. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. There's that statement of faith. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. And then listen to this. This is just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. If you think it's just an Old Testament, it's a New Testament. It is a, it is a way to pray. But even if he does not... We want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. They look at the king and they go, God's going to save us. But if he doesn't, what is that? That's faith. They don't know for sure, but this, they know that God's in charge anyway. And you know what, God, I'm going to trust you even though I don't know what's next. And so what happens next? The king gets so ticked off that he heats the fire so hot that when SEAL Team 7 goes to drop Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, they die. By the way, uh, 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 this furnace, most likely, think of an old milk bottle with the open top, and then it goes down like a milk bottle, and there was a hole in the front, a hole in the top, and they were carrying Shadrach, Meshach, Horshach, and Abednego up to the top, and they dropped them in. It was like Land of the Lost. Ah! Marshall, Will, and Holly. Thank you for understanding. Google that. And so what happens? They throw them in the fire and then this happens. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. I'm sure as they were going up the hill, they were going, okay, God can save us. As they're tying their arms, God can save us. As the guys who are taking them up are sweating so much, and then they pass out and drop them. They're probably like, God can save us. Does God have all power? Is God able to deliver? But we don't always get to tell God what to do. 
I don't know if it's happened to you yet where you've had a heartbreaking prayer request that wasn't answered the way you wanted. Sometimes he doesn't. And the worst part is sometimes people lie to you. I've had people tell me, God told me that that person's going to be healed. And there's been times that people said that to me, and I instantly was like, hmm. So be discerning with people. Don't just believe what people... Listen, you can look at that person and go, man, I hope so. I'm believing with you. And you can have all the faith in the world. Lazarus had enough faith to understand that God could raise him from the dead. But I don't know about you, I haven't seen Lazarus walking around lately. So there was a day that Lazarus died. And somebody might have prayed, Lord, would you heal Lazarus again? But God knows the plans, even though we don't. So sometimes we have to say, God, I know you can save us, but even if you don't, I'm going to trust you. James 1, verse 12, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. You know what James is reminding us? That your worst day, the day that your life ends, The day that the pastor says, what does this button do? Jesus, what are you doing here? Oh, that wasn't a good button, was it? The day that this world ends is going to be the best day of your life. Because in heaven there's no more pain or suffering or sorrow or hurt. The day that this world ends and things stop here, sunset here is sunrise in heaven. That best day you've ever had where you felt more joy than you've ever felt is just your first touch of heaven. More joy, more peace, more love than you've ever felt in your life. And so James reminds us, hey, when you're undergoing trials and struggles and difficulty, remember it's not about that. There's a crown of life that's at the end of the race. When the race is over, when you finish climbing the mountain, and I don't know if you've ever been mountain climbing, but I always get about halfway up the mountain and go, I'm not sure this is worth it. And sometimes we get to the top, and I look at my family and I go, this one was not worth it. But sometimes we get to the top and go, whoa, worth it. Can I tell you that eternal life is worth it? That relationship with Christ is worth it? regardless of whether prayers are answered the way you want them to be. Now, I want you to pray in faith. I want you to pray in strength. I want you to trust God, but I want you to know that He's in charge and you're not. Number three, Jesus is with us even in the fire. I don't know if you've ever been burned. I stepped in a fire a few years ago. Yep, I'm an idiot. I had my flip-flops on. I'd had a fire the day before. I walked out to push one of the logs and didn't realize that the day before the fire was a lot bigger and I stepped in the ash and the ash went over on top of my feet. And Kristen said, why were you wearing flip-flops and not shoes? I said, if I had been barefoot, it would have been better. Which is such a hillbilly comeback, by the way, just so you know. If you think barefoot's good, you might be a redneck. All right, so anyway. So I got burned so bad, I got in the car to drive myself to the hospital, had the solar cane all the way there. Ha, 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 ha. Got checked in a little kid's room. They didn't have a regular room ready. They just had a little kid's room. The good news is the bed fit me. (laughs) Horribly painful. Horribly painful. Worst pain, some of the worst pain of my life. Can I tell you some of what you guys have been through emotionally is more painful than that? Some of what you have experienced, whether it's as children, whether it's as an adult, whether it's a situation you're going through, a person you're dealing with, something that somebody just told you, something a doctor said to you, what you're dealing with right now is so painful, I can't even fathom. But can I tell you what I do know? That no matter what you walk through, that Jesus is with you. He will give you strength. He will give you courage. He will give you peace, even in the worst of times. He walks with you. You don't have to do it alone. Don't try to do it alone. When somebody says, don't worry, God won't give you more than you can handle. 
You look at them and you smile and you say, thank you so much for being positive. And then you say to God, I can't handle this without you. But with him, you can. So this is what happens next. They drop into the fire. King Nebuchadnezzar's looking and he starts freaking out. It says, King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. And I love this. Most theologians think this was actually Jesus that showed up to be with them in a fire. It's foreshadowing of how Jesus is going to be with us forever. And the truth is, all the ropes burned off and none of the clothes did. Talk about a miracle. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come out here, because I'm not coming in. It doesn't say that, I just... So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. The satraps, prefects, governors, royal advisors crowded around him. The guys who said, throw them in, now we're gathering around going, we might want to be nice to these guys from now on. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Some of you are missing eyebrows now because of the last barbecue. (laughs) Do you want me to point at you? Brian? Pork butt yesterday, you doing okay? Got all the... Their robes were not scorched, and I love this. No smell of fire on them. Why? Because God can do whatever he wants. God can do whatever he wants. But Eric, that's not fair. Yeah. You ever had joy when you didn't deserve it? You ever meet somebody that was such a blessing in your life, you just knew you didn't deserve it? We have a lot of what we don't deserve. Grace is something we don't deserve and God gives it to us. Jesus says in Matthew 28, Surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Now I want you to believe. I want you to put your faith in Christ. But I want you to know that when you put your faith in Christ, it doesn't mean that everything goes the way you want it to. The truth is, sometimes when you trust God and you follow God, you will be persecuted. You will be attacked. People will make fun of you. Some people will give you a hard time. Sometimes life will be difficult, but you will have peace. You will have joy. You give the guilt back to God and say, God, you've taken all my guilt and shame away and given me your glory. That's why... In Roman times, when Christians were persecuted and attacked, they died with smiles on their faces that the emperors could not stand. Because they said, how can these people be happy when we're doing all these terrible things? Well, the reason they could is they understood where their faith was. They understood what really was important. I want to encourage you to trust God when you pray. I want to encourage you to say, God, I'm going to trust you with this situation, with this circumstance, with this thing I'm dealing with. But I also want you to say that second part of the prayer, which is, God, even if you don't answer this prayer the way I want you to, I'm going to trust you. And that's the hardest prayer to pray. When you're suffering, when you're hurting, when life is hard. But that's a real prayer of faith. God, I'm going to trust you. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. I'd love to talk to you after the service about what it means that Jesus died for our sins because we're all broken and messed up and we need him. And so today, maybe you need to surrender your life to him. Maybe you're here today and the truth is you're struggling with a prayer you're praying. Hey, just lay it at his feet. Ask him to give you peace. That prayer that you keep praying over and over, maybe it's time to just say, God, you know what? I'm just going to trust you with this. And allow him to give you peace in your life, knowing that he's with you. He'll never leave you. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for this time today. Lord, I thank you for all those who've been through things that are so hard I can't even imagine. And yet they continue to walk in faith. 
They continue to walk in your presence. They continue to, to see your strength. Lord, I pray we wouldn't just keep that for ourselves, but because of what we've been through, Lord, as a church and as individuals, we'd be able to reach out and carry others who are hurting, others who are struggling, that we could let them know we've walked through that. We want to walk you through that too. Help us to be there for each other. Lord, I pray for your grace on our lives when we have a hard time walking in faith. Lord, give us your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. We have our time of